Anytime I can find a little hack or tweak in my home that just makes it run easier or makes it more simple, I'm all for it. This video is also sponsored by Thrive. Stay tuned for a little bit later in this video to hear about how Thrive has helped me simplify my life. Okay, number one is to swap out towel bars for towel hooks. If you have ever used towel bars in your home, you know that in order for the towel to look any level of pleasant, it needs to be hung perfectly on the towel rod, bar, towel bar, towel rod. Does it matter? It doesn't. The minute somebody dries their hand or your kid comes over and pulls on it, it doesn't look nice anymore. It immediately looks messy. But if you swap all of your bars out for hooks, you can just hang the towel. And it doesn't matter if it's hanged beautifully or perfect or whatever, you literally just hang on the towel bar. Okay, next up, one of my favorite things that I've done in my kitchen sink is just minimize the stuff that I keep like along the sink. I love decanting like my hand soaps and my dish soaps into more cohesive bottles. I think it just makes the whole space look a little more minimal and clean and tidy. And I have this little like rubber mat where I keep my soaps and I keep my sponges, which I love, but the problem is it gets wet and gross really quickly. And I feel like the point of it is supposed to be that it like doesn't. Anyways, what I've started doing is I have these white bar towels that I use. I love them for just tidying up around the house. And I take one, I fold it small, and I put it on this soap tray. And I just switch it out every couple of days. And I find that it has prevented the excess water from that rubber mat of like seeping down onto the actual countertop. This isn't really rocket science, clearly, but it's made my life a lot easier. I have been trying to find a solution for cups in my home for a while. Because why are there so many cups? The water bottle issue of us all having water cups and then like my mom comes to visit and she's got a water cup and then there's just water cups. They're always just strewn around on the counter. I've been working to find a good caddy solution for this for a while. I actually bought this caddy on Amazon. I thought it was gonna be perfect. It's not big enough, but I kept trying. Things need a place that they go and by giving things containers, it just makes them look more tidy. It look, makes them look more organized and then we always know where they are too. So I ended up opting for just like a basket instead because it sort of hides the water bottles themselves, which kid water bottles can be like colorful and like whatever, but it's a place that they can go and a place that they can live and just by corralling them on the counters has made it so much more simplified on my counters. Next up, store things with the tops on them. Store your kids' water bottles with the tops on them. Store your food containers with the tops on them. If you store things with the tops on them, you don't have to identify multiple locations to store these things and you always have all the pieces you need right when it's time. There's nothing more frustrating than going to like get your kid a cup and you can't find the matching top and where's the straw that goes with it. I also bought this handy little lid organizer because some of our Yetis do have multiple tops. Like some of our water bottles have like a sip top or you can do the straw top and I bought this little lid organizer and let me tell you this is the way to organize lids. Before we had them in a drawer and every time we opened the drawer one of them was getting stuck like a mashed potato masher and you're like why? Why? Do you betray me, Lid? Okay, next up, work on clearing the busy areas. We all have busy areas in our home. You may also refer to these as maybe like dumping areas. We've got them in our house. It tends to be places that are high traffic areas in our house that things tend to just get dumped. So an example, obviously going back to the cup corral is kitchen counters. So corralling cups is a really great solution for that. But I like to look at these busy areas and think about what's constantly ending up here and can I find a good solution for it. So one example for us is we have this little like, I don't know if it's like, it's not like a kitchen island. It's like a little kitchen piece that sticks out. We sit here all the time. It's where my husband and I keep our chargers. And I try to be really good about putting them away. We have a spot that we keep our wires in our living room. But if you guys know, I have a general rule that you should store your things where you use them. And so by storing them over in the living room when we're always using them here, it just made it so that we weren't putting it away as often. And more often than not, these chargers were left sitting out. And so I was like, I need to find a solution of how I can um, store these cords literally right here because this is where they always end up and this is where they're always cluttering. So I have been playing around with a few ideas. I ended up getting these ceramic um, can canisters and I've been using these. We'll see how it goes. I feel like I like the idea a lot because it's easy to throw them in and pull them out. But a canister here to hold chargers work so much better because it's right there. You just open, you throw it in, you open, you take it out and it looks really clean and concise on the countertop. The point is look for your busy areas and then identify what it is in these busy areas that keep getting cluttered, you know, sort of like creating piles and then think about solutions for them. And just because you tried a solution, it doesn't work, does not mean it is impossible to organize this space. I've tried multiple solutions in some places until I find the one that works. Okay, I also have to tell you guys about this retractable charger that I got. Um, I feel like if you're always having chargers sitting out, this is a really good solution. I thought I wasn't gonna like it, but it has turned out to be so great. It has like a US 
USB-C on it. It has like a lightning thunderbolt, whatever, all the kinds of little chargers, micro USB that you would want. But when you're done with it, you just pull it and the whole thing retracts back up. I've been loving this thing. Okay, quick break to tell you about sponsor for today's video, which is Thrive Market. I've been using Thrive Market since before my second was born. It's probably been about four years that I have been a Thrive member. If you don't know, Thrive Market is an online membership based grocery store that has a guaranteed savings on every order. And I love Thrive Market because it helps simplify my life. I actually use online ordering for all of my groceries, even local, like grocery pickup. And I always get heat for this. People think I'm being lazy or whatever. Maybe I am, I don't know. But I actually do it because when I go into stores, I end up buying more stuff and buying stuff I don't need. And I deter from my meal plan and like the things that I had set in place. I use meal planning very strictly in my week because it simplifies my life. I know exactly what I'm eating, what I need to prep, what's coming the next day. There are no questions. There's no wondering what's for dinner. There's none of it. And that's what I love about Thrive is I will spend four or five days adding to my cart, making sure I have all of the things I need. I love using Thrive because my local grocery stores don't have a lot of like really great options for like different dietary needs or some of the more organic foods or some of the more like high quality snacks. I just don't have access to those locally. Um, or if I do, they are marked up really high. When I buy those things from Thrive, not only do I have access to them really easily, um, but I'm always getting a discount on them. On Thrive, you can filter by like literally any kind of diet, anything from gluten-free to vegan to keto. Now Thrive is a membership, so you pay for the year to be a Thrive member. I usually make back that money in savings after I've ordered two times. And if you don't make back the money, then Thrive will refund you the membership price. So it's basically free to be a member if you think about it that way. But if you've never used Thrive before, I have a link that will give you 30% off your first order and a free gift up to $60. So check out that link in the description box down below. It's thrivemarket.com forward slash butt first coffee. That'll get you 30% off your first order plus that free gift up to $60. Next up is to declutter often. I feel like this is a pretty obvious one, but for some reason it can be really easy to forget. I think lots of times we're thinking about organizing and we're always trying to like tidy our space and organize our space. But if you're just organizing stuff that has sort of turned into clutter, all you're doing is putting a Band-Aid on the problem. You're not actually solving the problem. And so that tidying or that organization that you have created is just gonna fall apart right away. So always, whenever you're doing any tidying, always think about decluttering first. I like to tackle any space and say, okay, what in here can go first, right? Like get rid of the stuff that is definitely clutter. So then you are not taking extra time to organize clutter. Okay, this next one has been a huge help in our house and it is to create weekly sort of tasks lists. So for us, this is something that we got really good about doing once we had our third child because when you have three kids running around all the time, it sometimes really feels really hard to get to the things that you want to do around the house. You have that like one picture that's sitting there forever and you're like, yeah, I'm going to frame that someday. And like three months later, it's still sitting there. So my husband and I usually on like Thursdays or Fridays or whatever, we touch base really quick. We're just like, what things do you want to get done this weekend? What stuff like has been on your list? What do you want to do? And he'll say some stuff he needs to do. I'll say some stuff I want to get done. We make a little list and then we will usually kind of identify like where in our weekend it will happen. I'm like, oh cool, on Saturday morning when the baby takes his nap, I'm gonna take the older kids out for a coffee date and so you can do ABC. So we just kind of have like a game plan. Anyways, at the end of the day, if you don't sort of schedule time to get to these little tasks that you need to do around your house, they're just going to pile up and you're gonna end up with all of these little like to-do piles all around your house. It's a shameless plug, but I use my Caffeinate and Conquer Weekly Planner. This is a planner that I designed um, and I love the planner because it sort of allows me to do that. At the beginning of the week, I will brain dump all the stuff I need to do, like work stuff and whatever, but I can also jot down projects I need to get it done around the house. And then it's really easy for me to sort of schedule in when I can actually feasibly do that. I feel like it's a really easy way to make sure that you're sort of getting to a couple of things you wanna to get to every single week. Cause again, if you don't actually schedule time to do it, you're probably never gonna do it. Minimize your wardrobe. I feel like this is a no brainer, but a wardrobe in my opinion is one of those places that really needs to be frequently assessed. It is really easy for little pieces to come into our, our wardrobe. So it's not just about when I say minimize your wardrobe, I don't mean like go up to your closet and minimize it and you're cool. I just mean actively work on minimizing it. I personally love to do this as I am putting laundry away. I will look at a piece and maybe I wore it and I didn't love it. Maybe I remember wearing it and it like, it just wasn't comfortable, right? It didn't fit right. I didn't love it. Like it's time for it to go. I find the best way to maintain my wardrobe is not by these like big once a year declutters, which I still do them sometimes, especially as I'm going between those like seasons of life, you know, with babies. But I find by doing 
it literally like every other week just sort of like quickly assessing as I'm putting stuff away it's so much more easy to manage okay my next one is to try to get good about putting things away this takes a little bit of practice but the more you do it the more habitual it comes um, most things in our home have a place that they belong but we're not always good about returning those things to the place they go because of a few different reasons one the convenience illusion I've talked about this before this is the idea that we think it's more convenient to leave something out because we know we're gonna use it again. But if you're not using it right now, literally the 15 seconds of like opening the drawer and putting it away and then having to open the drawer and take it back out when it's time is usually more convenient than leaving it out, taking up space on a flat surface in your home. Another reason that lots of times we don't get things back to where they go is like I mentioned earlier, is that things are not being stored where they use. So it takes a little bit of more effort, like you have it down in the kitchen and you need to take it upstairs to the bathroom or it needs to go down to the basement or whatever. And finally, maybe we're just not habitually in the routine of putting things back where they go. So it's really about pushing yourself to do it. These like little reminders, little reminders, little reminders. I love the idea of the 60 second rule. If you go to put something down off that surface and you're like, mm, can I put this away in less than 60 seconds, which is like 95% of things, go ahead and do it. The reason that I love this and I like getting stuff put away is because I feel like it keeps your working areas clear. When your working areas are clear, your home feels so much more usable. You ever had the feeling like, let's say you need to cook dinner, right? And you go into the kitchen and the kitchen's a mess. You don't feel like you can just start cooking, right? Because your space doesn't feel usable. I heard somebody use it as a reference once, like have you ever gone to go shopping and you can't find a parking spot, right? And it gets really frustrating because you don't have anywhere to park your car. It's kind of the same idea. If your working space is not clear, it makes it a lot harder to start the project that you want to do. But by keeping your space clear, and keeping, keeping your working surfaces clear, you can always kind of just get started right when you need to. And that is a huge way to simplify life because it's like you're not giving yourself work just to start the work. Okay, the next one is to consider using up what you have or consider borrowing what you don't have. So let's write this down. Try to work through the things that you have already before adding to it. This can be used on a gamut of situations. So say your pantry, look through your canned goods. We all probably have too many. What canned goods can you add into this week's meal plan so that you can break some of those canned goods down and have a little bit less of them before you go and buy more? What's in your freezer? What meat do you have? What can you cook this week with the stuff in your freezer before you go and buy more. Another example may be arts and crafts supplies. Our day-to-day -day arts and crafts is pretty minimal, but we'll add in stuff sometimes. I grew up with a very artistic family. My mom had an entire craft room and I have amazing memories growing up, going in there and creating. And I'm not saying kids need that because kids literally will create the coolest things with like scissors in a box that you got from Amazon. But I sometimes will rotate in arts and crafts stuff, but I will use up what we have first. For example, my kids right now have this little foil Set. I'm not gonna add in any like little extra arts and crafts activities or like boxed whatever until that is used up and we are done with that. So really think about using stuff up before replacing it. And then the borrowing option, sometimes we buy things we need for like a single occasion, just cause honestly it is 2024 and it is really easy to go to Amazon and type it in and buy it and then have it. But if it's something you're buying for a single occasion, it is it something that you can borrow instead. Maybe you're hosting your kid's birthday party and you need some tablecloths. Can you just like borrow some from a neighbor, or from a friend? I remember I was doing like a birthday or something and I needed two cake stands for whatever reason. I don't need to own two cake stands. So I just borrowed a cake stand from a friend, used my cake stand. Now I had two cake stands. Even though it seems very convenient to sometimes just buy it because we can literally just like click an order and then it's here tomorrow which listen, we're all guilty of charged, I've done it. But now you're just gonna end up with clutter and something that maybe you have to get rid of down the road because you have too much of it. Create containers for your mementos, for your special memory type items. Um, I actually pulled you guys on Instagram recently and asked what are some of the hardest things that you have to organize? Memories and mementos, one of the like top three things this is for, you know what I mean. So create containers. Containers in general is great for making sure that you're not overflowing anything. It's why dressers are really great because when you have a dresser drawer for shirts and that drawer is now full, it means you don't have room for any more shirts, right? So whenever we can create containers for things, it tells us when we have too much of it. My husband and I each have one container that's like our memory container from our childhood. All of his stuff, like all his memories, whatever he wants, it's in that container. I have one for me. And then what I did last year, which I'm absolutely loving is I've created one for each of my children um, to store their special mementos as well. I love having the container because 
um, when you're a parent and your kid makes stuff, everything feels special. Having a container sort of makes me think through what I'm keeping and what things really are the most important things that I need to keep from that time. Next up is to avoid recreational spending. This is something I have gotten really good about, not to toot my own horn, toot toot. So about I don't know, six or seven years ago, my husband and I sort of buckled down one year and we said, this is it, it's time we're paying off of our debt. We had, I don't know, I don't even remember, 70,000, 80,000 between cars and student loans and credit card, we had a lot of debt. Two of the biggest things we did besides like having a budget and sticking to it were cutting back on eating out and two, avoiding recreational spending, going into stores just to like, look around, you will end up buying stuff when you do this. You will end up buying stuff. Something will be on sale, something will be cute. You're gonna end up buying stuff. So if you can limit that recreational shopping of sort of just going out as recreation, going out as a cure for boredom, you're gonna end up with less random stuff in your house that you then just need to declutter later. It gets a little trickier when we have our phones, right? Because it is very easy to recreational shop on our phones. There's a few ways around this. You guys know I have an entire video down below about how I really decreased my phone usage. I sort of broke my phone addiction, if you will. Um, and that has helped a lot with any sort of just like recreational purchasing on my phone. My final one that I have been working on a lot every year, I get a little bit better. If you're going through and you're decluttering, something. There's some things that are like obvious keeps and obvious go aways, right? But it's always that stuff in the middle that hangs us up and often just ends up staying and then just still sort of being clutter. And I love the concept of Swedish death cleaning. I've done a video about this. <laughs> Honestly, the concept of it feels really morbid, but it's just that idea that like when we die, we don't take our stuff with us, right? So I sometimes will literally think about my stuff and I'm like, if I die tomorrow, I have all this stuff that somebody has to go through. It's not an immediate yes. Why am I hanging on to it and creating a burden for somebody down the road when they die? Which I know is a really bizarre way to think about it. Listen, tell me if I am the only person who does this. And maybe it's because I watch too many murder documentaries. Do you know in the murder documentaries and then they have like the crime scene videos and they're like scanning through the person's house. Sometimes at the end of the night when I'm getting ready for bed, I literally will like, I'm embarrassed saying this. I will like look at my house and I'll be like, if something tragic happens and the cops come in tomorrow and take pictures, this living room would look really good in a crime scene photo. I can't be the only person who does this. I literally think about this. I feel like it's the equivalent of like grandma's always being like, make sure you have clean underwear on in case something happens. All right, my friends, that does it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Remember to be kind to yourself and to others and I will see you all in my next video.